So welcome everybody. Welcome to a new human experience podcast. And today is November the 18th, 2021. The topic for this evening is understanding your spiritual blueprint. Um, a couple of weeks ago, um, I started to look into something it's it is called it is um it's called kimen dan danxia which is a chinese system of understanding the influence of cosmic energies and how this cosmic energies plus um the heavenly i would say uh, celestials um, as in where the planets are, and also Earth position plus humanistic energies, how all those four energies work together. And these four forces works together um, on each human being and also influence how we shape the world around us because we are the ones that live our lives and create realities and create history and, and shape our own experience with that. So all of these, there's a system um, that the Chinese has come up with that tries to explain how to make sense of it. And of course, the Chinese is not the only ones who have created a system. There, there are Vedic system, and then there are, um, I think um, there are a few different traditions that has created different systems to understand how these, these energies work on us. Um, for example, astrology in the more of the, the Western world, the study of astrology. So this is kind of um, similar, but only it's it's the Chinese way of seeing it. And the system is um, based on something called Ba Zi, which is really the the eight, um, I would say the eight characters or the eight, or I um, really the the date, the, the day, the hour, the year, the month. So kind of um, each, so kind of four, they call it four columns, which means that the year is one column. So they have two words, two characters to um, give the, the, the more details about the year, the influence of the year, and then the same for the month, same for the day, and then same for the hour that you, each person were born. And so the, um, when we look at this, we, we think of, okay, birth date, astrology, um, some people believe in it very much and some people don't. For the people who, who, who really think that they, they don't pay too much attention to it is because they find that um, it is really quite a fatalistic way of looking at it that, you know, our birth is, we thought that our birth is not something that we control. So if we, if we think that something, that means our destiny is out of our own control. And so that's why not everybody pay too much attention to astrology. My reasons for looking at it, uh, especially in, in this platform of a new human experience is that it's really based on my um, desire to really get to know ourselves better, to know myself better, and also to assist everyone else to know themselves better. Our birthday is important in my um, in my thinking is because we tend to think that our birthday, our birth parents, where we were born, those are things that this is beyond our control from a, a physical point of view, from 
from a human point of view is because, you know, we are a little kid, we are a baby. So how can we control where we were born, our parents, all that? It's out of our control. That's only on the um, physical level. But if we look beyond the physical level is if we look at it from the soul's point of view, before we come here, before we come on earth, we actually, our soul has always existed and will always exist. And our soul actually planned every time we come, we, before we come on, on earth or any other planets for that matter. It's is actually not something that is random. There is a purpose and there is a reason why each of our soul chose to be here on the day that we were born. It's nothing is, is really random. It's actually a very, um, it's a conscious choice. Why? It's because the day that we come, on earth is the day when our physical body started to be bombarded by the energies. Um, everything is energy. So when our physical body started to become bombarded by the energies of our environment, it starts to shape how we as a body express that energy. So that is why in order to get to know ourselves better, looking into what the, the, um, the date of our, our birth holds for us as the initial starting point that our soul have chosen for us to come on this um, exploration on earth is really getting back to the original reason why our soul wanted to come here wanted to have this experience. We're not here because we um, have no control over our destiny. We have some control. We don't have 100% control because there are so many cosmic energies that's hitting us. However, the more we are able to understand what it is that is influencing how we can express our energies through this physical body, the, um, the more we can actually gain control back of how we can shape our destiny. So instead of being fatalistic, a more systematic um, understanding of all of these elements actually can give us more control over our, how we want, how we can shape our experience on earth. So with that in mind, that is, that is my, um, that is really why I want to explore this topic is to just talk a little bit about um, what I'm going to talk about. So as I mentioned, this um, using our, our birth date, the, the bazi, which is really um, Chinese words referring to our year month, date, and hour of our birth, which is eight, like it means eight words. So the, these eight words actually, the meaning of eight words is our birth time. So, and the system is called Kimen Danjia. And this, this, I've already mentioned the system is big system, so I'm only going to talk about um, the guardians of destiny. So um, when you, <laughs> this name guardians of destiny, when I first heard this, I thought, oh my gosh, these are, I, I thought of these as being the like guardian angels, or I thought of these as being, um, uh, I am um, like, Archangels, something like that, and I, and I believe when Sifu James um, sent us the, the workshop materials, it he actually did um, have a uh, some notes there about 
archangels. So that was what I thought about my understand my initial understanding of what the guardians of destinies are. However, the more I look into that, the more I um, started to to really get a better understanding of it. My understanding of it has changed. For me, um, what I my understanding of what the guardians of destinies are to the best of my knowledge, is that they are really um, ways of how the energies, the cosmic energies can combine. So they are really more areas of exploration rather than thinking of them as actual characters or entities or um, gods or deities. They are really a a combination of energies that is each combination of energy is a way for our soul to come here to explore life on earth. So that's my understanding of what the guardians of destinies are. And because they are energies, so inessential, um, potentially, everybody have access to all 10 guardians. However, because each one, each one we come here to for a particular reason, we um, for a particular purpose. So that's why we actually there is a primary guardians or primary set of energies that we've chosen to explore um, in this lifetime, in this life stream. And that does not mean we, we cannot explore anything else, but it is just that this is our, um, our, in, our primary guardian. It's really our initial exploration. It's, it's our starting point. And as we become more conscious, as we become more um, aware of ourselves, aware of what is influencing our life and how as, as we become more, um, what is the word I'm looking for? As we become more, getting more control over our own beingness of our own thinking, um, as we mature, we can start to because of our consciousness, when our consciousness start to rise, we actually can start to explore some of the others as well. We actually naturally would be able to go into explore the other areas. However, what we were, were born with is really our, you can think of that as our special abilities. That's our um, secret power. Whether we know it or not, it is our secret power. It is really the set of energies that we, that is easiest for us to express and to explore from there. And the more we become um, mature and conscious and become um, able to be the, um, the guardian of our own experience, and then the more, the easier it is for us to be able to connect with and explore and play with all the other sets of energies. So off the, the, that's my understanding of what the, the, the guardians of destiny are, is that while it's not something that is fatalistic, if you're born under some of the bad guardians or some of the less, um, the less helpful or the less easy to manage guardians. It doesn't mean that we, we are going to have a bad life. It simply means that um, we are actually more ambitious the, because only the ambitious uh, or the more mature souls would pick a more, um, would, would pick a less advantageous, or a less explored set of energies to play with. So with all that said, let me start to kind of get a, um, 
just a brief description of what each of those guardians are. There are 10 of them. So let me kind of um, just see if I can bring them up. Um, I know these are really small, small prints. So maybe I can try to, um, yep. So these are, these are things that I think some of you have this. And if not, don't worry, no need to take any notes. I would be happy to share these notes with you. So just concentrate on listening and, and, and getting a better feel of what each of the guardian's special abilities are. So the first one, the first one is called the chief and the chief, you can think of the chief as being the, the boss or the, the natural leader of the, the, the pack. So, and if you can think of this as the, the energies, it, it would be um, one of the easiest and the, the energies to work with and the, well, potentially easiest energies to work with because the the chief really has the ability to manifest almost anything that they they put their mind to, and um, so it is really about chiefs have this stamina, mental stamina to go after what they want. And they are able to um, move mountains in order for them to get their, their wish. This is, of course, not everybody who is a chief um, may have this experience. However, in the, the, the highest, I would say the, the most, um, the highest expression of the chief is this, is that they, can, they have the ability to ma manifest everything that they, they think, that they put their mind to. Of course, that really depends on what's in your mind and how your thinking is. If you, um, if you are full of negative thoughts, if you really have not... Um, gone through the discipline of refining your own focus and refining your and really making sure that you um, become very disciplined about what you focus your mind on and you think of you know all the worst case scenarios and guess what if you if you use too much if you focus on the worst case scenario because your your native energy your native guardian or your native um secret power is to be able to manifest anything then even if you don't have your even if you focus on the worst case scenario you will manifest the worst case scenario so for for the chief it is really what you hear to learn is really to be very conscientious and conscious of what you're thinking and really practice and start to clean up your own thinking. And when you get to the point where you can think and use your mental abilities to manifest things that actually support you, then you would be able to, you know, get the most benefit of your own secret power. So chief, if you, you're, if you know that your guardian or your, your native set of secret power is the chief, then, and, and you're not having a good time in life, then this is really the area that you need to look into is to clean up your own thinking, clean up the way you um, have your mental focus. The more you can focus on positive, 
things that is supporting yourself and supporting the people around you, then the better your life is going to be. And for those of us who are here to 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 pick who have picked this set of energies to play with, then that is your that is your task. Your task is really to be very um, prudent about what you allow in your own mind, what you're thinking, to think positive thoughts. And when you can get yourself into that place of focusing on what you want and on what is good for you, then that would then you brought your life would you would start to feel like you have a charmed life because what you focus on you have that innate ability to make it happen in this world so this is the chief this is what the, the people who have picked the guardian of, of the chief is here to explore the next one is really heaven. And heaven is kind of similar in a way to the, the chief with just one particular um, difference is that instead of mental clarity and mental focus and really focusing on what you want, it's actually visualizing. So those are the people who um, needs to learn how to make pictures, how to be able to create that picture in the mind, picture of what it is that they want to be around them, to what their world is going to, should look like. When you have a clear vision, when you have a picture in your mind that is clear uh, of what it is that you want, then you will be able to manifest that. That's your, that is your secret power. Your secret power is to be able to envision and being able to manifest your vision. And because the, the ability to have visions is your secret power. So you, the people that um that have heaven as their guardians as their the set of energies that they're here to explore they tend to be able to um see in the future they would have force the power of foresight they it's it's kind of like a um, um a, a very intuitive way but instead of um knowing they would be able to actually see it in pictures they would get a, a, um, a, a picture of what it is that maybe something that's going to happen. And let's say someone mentioned, oh, I'm going to um, go out and buy a pair of shoes. And then they will all of a sudden picture, like maybe if I hear a friend of mine say that they want to um, get a pair of shoes in order to um, take on their hiking journey then for those of us who have the heaven vision we would be able to actually see oh you know what I actually see that you know they that if you are able to um, buy a particular kind of of shoes it will actually make your hiking experience much easier and everything is going to go well so that's really the superpower of the people for heaven. Um, I know that we think that the chief is the natural leader. I, I just want to throw in is that everyone, everyone has the ability, has that potential to be the leader. It's just that we lead according to our um our special power so a a chief would be able to lead by their 
thinking by how they can focus their attention, how they can manifest what they, they, they think. But the uh, person who is in the heaven, who have the heavenly um, like guardian, they would be able to lead through visualizations, through visions. So it does not mean that, you know, heaven is not a leadership um, quality or any of the other ones. It is just that when we get to know what our special power is, then and we play to our strength, then we would be able to lead using that as um, that would be the easiest way for us to lead using that. And the next one I would like to talk about is Earth. So Earth is keeper of Mother Earth. There are different, um, so Earth really are the, the protector of Earth, of Mother Earth. They, for them it's easy, um, anything to do with land, anything to do with um, the welfare of earth, that is really their, the sphere of, of exploration. So it's not just about, um, you know, buying and investing. It's also about protection as well. This, this idea of protecting earth, of doing something. To, to, to make sure that the earth is, the, like the land itself, is going to be taken care of. That is what this set of energies is here to explore. Um, so with this, is, it's also about, um, you, can, you can spin this so many ways. This also mentioned healing as well. So healing is, is really about um, what earth would be able to, with what particular earth would be able to, for example, produce the best plants or bless, best herbs in order to support our health. So that would also be something that people with the, Earth Guardian would be interested in exploring. So all of this, anything to do with Earth, anything to do with protection, protecting Earth, to do with um, all of this, like anything that is Earth related uh, and business opportunities, whether it is developing, a particular land, a land developer, um, anything to do with, for example, um, minerals within the earth as well. Um, not necessarily to dig up the minerals, but also which, how to dig up the minerals in the way so that it can um, be least disruptive to earth. So these are the, the issues that the earth guardians would be interested in exploring. So that is earth as a guardian. And then next is Phoenix. So Phoenix is um, spoken words. So the chief and heaven guardians have the special ability to shape their reality with either focusing their their mind and using their thoughts or using visualization the the phoenix is really being able to shape their reality using the spoken word so these people anything to do with using words to shape the, the their own reality then that would be what the phoenix people who are exploring the phoenix as a set of energies would be interested in so this could be um it could be things like um 
being a, let's say, a hypnotist would be interested in this because the hypnotists use words to guide somebody into a hypnosis or um, a therapist using words to guide somebody into healing and also a um, poet. All those people are really oh, using words, using the, the power of the spoken words in order to shape reality. Um, it also mentioned here that wizards, so witches and wizards, they use um, spells. So spoken words as in speaking a certain spell in order to wish well or to wish ill to other people. So all of this is really what the, the Phoenix Guardians are here to support. So that's their that's their secret power. And the next one is Hook. Hook is, I think together with, um, there, are, there are five guardians that are um, regarded as, I would say, positive guardians. And then there are five that are regarded as, I wouldn't say, I wouldn't use the word negative, but they are, I would say, yin, is that they, they use alternative ways. They explore different venues in order to, that are not, um, that are not the most established, the most, so those are the people that, and Hook is one of the ones, uh, let's see, who else? Phoenix, Hook, and um, Snake, Tortoise, and Tiger. So those are the five that are here to, that are considered um, negative, or I would say alternative energies to to work with so why is hook so what what is hook um hook is really has the secret power is being able to get information across time so and they can tap into information from past lives or future lives and present life so anything to do with move that is to move beyond um to move beyond now so these hook is the are the people who are exploring this set of energies that they can go back and look at something that happened in the past and be able to get information from there and also they can tap into the future as well because time goes both ways. It can be past and future. So they can, they can step beyond time to be able to get information. They can see into that. They can get knowledge from those. So this is the, the secret power of Hook. And um, of course... <laughs> Not too many people would be comfortable to explore this because um, a lot of people may don't even believe in past life, let alone getting information from past life. I think that's why this, this set of energies is considered, I would say, alternative. And it's because of this element that it is it is beyond time and it this is a the superpower of the hook though and some of the things that the people that is under hook should be aware of is that they 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 have they are passionate people they are they 
if they are not careful, they can um, be too attached to certain ideas that really derail them. They can be, they can be looked, they can be, they can come across as being very um, aggressive. It's because of this passion that is within them. And this passion actually comes with this idea. It is this energy of that we think of as passion that gives them the ability to explore beyond time, to step beyond time. But uh, however, because they can step beyond time, they can actually see reality in a way that most people cannot see reality. So they, they don't really, um, they may be misunderstood and, and, and by people. So that is really something, the, the best and the worst of people that are exploring this set of energy called the hook. And then harmony. Harmony is the connector. So harmony is here really to explore relationships, how to build relationships. What does it take to connect people? And, and the, in order to um, explore this ability to build relationships, to connect people, they can sometimes be um, a little bit intuitive because they can actually sense what other people are thinking um, when they are so mm, intent on building relationships that they have, they, they kind of develop this, this sixth sense of how to um, build relationship with someone else, what it is that they need to say, what it is that they they can do in order to bridge that relationship with other people. And they are great people to have on as a, um, well, as a leader. If, if a leader can, uh, one of the, the, I would say, quality as a leader is being able to connect people as well. So harmonies can be great leaders. And when they get to the point where they really are comfortable being able to bridge the gap between people, build relationships, and use that relationship in a constructive way. And next one is Harmon. Uh, oh, sorry, it's Moon. So Moon is the, it says here is the guardian of knowledge. So the, what I know about moon is that the moon people have a, they are, they are great energy trackers. They track energies. So those are the people who can, let's say, um, hold a piece of garment from someone else and be able to track that person to be able to get information, knowledge about that person just from holding an object that belongs to that person. So, so that's the special energy of moon. They are guardians of knowledge because they are so good at tracking energy and they do this so um, unconsciously that <clears throat> they actually, are able to attract all of the different energies, uh, all of the different knowledge to them. So they, they have this accumulation of, of knowledge. So that's, <clears throat> so that's, the, um, that's the secret power of people with the moon. Of course, the... The, the downside of this is that they, it can be quite overwhelming as well, because when, when you know too much and you don't have a, a good grounding, then this knowledge can throw you, can, can destabilize 
you as well. So that's also some of the pitfalls of being, uh, of exploring the moon as your, as your guardian. And so a good grounding, a good grounding would really be um, my best advice if moon, the moon is, is what it is that you're here to explore as your primary guardian. Next one is snake. Snake, um, it says here that snake is really the counterpart to heaven. So the heavens can visualize, can visualize and they create their, um, they shape their reality through this visualization. And the snake, the, the secret abilities of the snake is that they can actually, um, command energies. They can command energies in, um, as in natural energies. For example, wind, water, those, those are really the natural energies of earth. So those are the people who can, um, let's say, they can change the weather. They can say, oh, okay, I don't, yeah, these, uh, they are the ones who actually can, through their own um, energy, be able to say, okay, let's, let's, let's have, right now, let's say it's, it's raining, but okay, let's have, um, I need to go out to, to catch a bus or maybe to, to, to buy something. And I need, you know, 15 minutes of you know, dry weather. So let's, the, those are the people, snake are the people who can do that. They will be able to, to um, really connect with the elements and say, hey, give me 15 minutes of, you know, dry time so that I can go and do this. And, and the, the elements would, <laughs> would just strangely be, be accommodating to them. So these, the snake people are, are these amazing people who have that affinity with controlling the natural forces. And they can actually use, use this ability for, for other things as well. <clears throat> they can actually uh, um, manifest parking spot, for example. <laughs> actually, the parking spot is, is quite easy to manifest <laughs> in, in, my own, um, in, in my own experience. But um, so that is what the snake people is there ability is their special ability is really to um, they have command of natural forces and the downside is um it's really that when they they can actually when they are not grounded though Let's say when they are in a bad mood, though, they can actually cause, let's say if they are crying, if they are sad, they can actually, because they have this natural affinity with natural forces, that when they are sad, they actually can make the, um, the sky rain. And so that's the, uh, that's the downside of the, the snake people. And so the next one I want to, to go on to is tortoise. Tortoise are um, <laughs> it's part of the, the dark force, part of the the, the alternative um, guardians. And this one um, they possess a power to influence people. So these are 
that's why the, the, the tortoise is considered the opposite or the counterpart of the chief because they both are very mentally, they're both mental. They, the, the chief use their mental ability in order to manifest what they want. Whereas the special power of tortoise are the people who can influence how other people think. And also, of course, the reverse is, is true as well, is that other people can influence how they think as well. So they have this ability to project their thought to other people and also be in easily influenced by other people as well. And this is a special power. And um, <laughs> I, can, I can say that because I'm a tortoise. So, <laughs> and so what is the, the, um, in the best of the best case scenario is that you can use this someone with, uh, with a tortoise is that exploring this set of energies is that they can use their ability to influence other people to be able to influence um, good is to, let's say someone may be depressed. A tortoise would be able to inject hope and inspiration into those people. And the downside is that when the tortoise is close to someone who is depressed is that they can get depressed as well. But that only happens if you are not grounded. So, so when you're grounded though, as a tortoise, when you are at the, the top of your game, you would be able to um, st uh, sidestep that be able to know that, oh, okay, I'm feeling this, 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 this um, sadness and all of that. And, and when a tortoise is grounded, they will be able to know that, okay, this is not mine, this is someone else. So they can actually just let go of that and know that this is not an energy um, that needed to be Take, taken up and, and, and um, claim as their own. So that is the superpower of tortoise is that they can use their ability to influence other people's thoughts for good as well as for bad as well. Because uh, um, a tortoise with unsavory or, or um, really bad intentions can cause a lot of, of um, issues for the people around them. And however, I think because this universe is very, what goes around comes around. So when you use your abilities to, um, for, for your own gain and not for, mutual support, then what goes around comes around as well. So the, the last one that I want to talk about is tiger. Tiger is considered a, an alternative one as well, um, considered a hard to, or, or not as prominent to work with as well. Um, why? I don't know. I'm not a tiger, so I can't really, I'm, I, I don't have that insight into why it could be, why it's considered an alternative energy. Because as far as I can tell, um, tiger, if you look at that, that representation, tiger is full of energy stamina. So these people are physical strength. So physical strength is here, is really what these people are here to explore and to use their, their strength 
for good, to explore the physical realm, how to use their, how to build up their body, and to um, so so people that are that can excel in sports, a for example, a, a basketball or a um, a marathon runner. Those if they so those are really what the the tiger energy is here to explore is physical prowess and the the downside is oh okay the downside for this is that um the tiger though it is not a it strength is not for it's, it's not for it's not without cost there is also cost if you don't take care of your own body, if you push yourself beyond your limit without really taking care of, um, of healing your own body, then this, you know, really just um, exploring this part of physical stamina, it can actually hurt your own body as well because we um our body is when we're young it's probably not an issue because we can actually heal so much faster but as we get older then we start to um feel the effects of all our our neglect so that's the the word of warning for people that are exploring this set of energies is to really love your body and give yourself, push yourself. Yes, because that's what you're here to do. However, also take good care of your body. So these are all the 10. And I just want to um, recap is that every one of these 10 are available to you potentially if you are let's say if, if i'm a tortoise that does not mean that i can't go to the chief does not mean that i don't have uh, the the strength of the tiger that does not that's not what the guardians are the thing is that we um these 10 are we have a one guardian which is what we are here our soul is here to explore however all the others are available to us potentially and when you have master or when you have start to to gain mastery over what you're here to do then it is actually um all the other energies would be available to you for you to support you to master that energy. So all 10 energies is within you or it's available for you to explore. That's why it is um, advice. It's very advisable to start to get to know your own guardians and really look at all these um, when you get your own guardian is to spend some time to connect with your guardian and really see if that resonates with you and if it does not then um, let's say it could be because of several things it could be that you are, are resisting somehow um, you, res you you are not align with that and the other thing is perhaps you don't have the right birth dates and um, because I've already explained what these all 10 of these are when you, um, you know, really take time to get to know yourself start to see if you if the, the, the guardians that you have matches 
what it is that you know. For myself, um, it really matches. So that's why I was like, I wish I knew that, you know, <laughs> 20 years ago, maybe even 30 years ago, it would have made my life much easier because it took me a while to really I get to the point where I am comfortable with, with what it is that I'm here to do with my special ability. And, um, and it's, it's actually very easy for, for each of us to, to all think, oh, we, I want to be chief because the chief gets to know, gets to manifest everything. But that's not the point. The point is that our soul picked a particular guardian for us to explore in this lifetime. And if you, if you um, have not done your own work yet, and if you have not done your own inner work yet, then um, you most likely more likely than not is that you're actually not expressing the highest capability of your own guardian and because each each guardian there's like even for the positive ones for the positive guardians even for people who who are who are chiefs and who are um, heavens have heaven at their as their guardian it does not automatically imply that their life is going to be easy going um, not really not necessarily it really depends on what your um, how you how mature you are in and how much mastery you have in working with your own set of energy if you achieve that you have somehow adopted all these negative thoughts, then I, then, you know, pretty much I can, can uh, definitely see that your life won't be easy because you're manifesting all from the negativities. However, once you know that that is your special power, you would be able to work on cleaning up your own thoughts and really focusing on positive things in your life then when you get that mastery then and and then and only then you would be able to get the 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 highest abilities and really get the the most out of the set of energies that you are here your special power that you are here to experience and to play with so that is really what i want to emphasize is that we all have access to all of them all sets of energies we have however there is one particular one that we are here to explore and master and when you have done your or your work in mastering um rest assured that you would be in a like you you have access to all of the others as well so that's all I would like to talk about.